thank you for tuning in. Um, I made a question poll in a group the other day asking people what kind of content they wanted for harp-related information and activities. And a lot of my harpist friends said that they would like to see some tips on how to move this behemoth out for a gig. Um, and I guess that's something that hadn't really occurred to me because this is my job and I do it every day and so it didn't occur to me that it would be something that people might be curious about. But then I thought about it, that is one of the questions I get most often at a gig. It's how did you get this in here? Or do you need help with that? Um, in all cases, the answer is I brought it myself and no. But it's not something that I learn to do overnight. And uh, one of the ways that somebody phrased the question is how does a smaller person move a big instrument like this without having to ask somebody for help? So I thought that this would be a good video for y'all today. And I don't think I should actually do this real time when I'm really getting ready for a gig because I don't have time to stop and talk about it and make sure the camera angle is right. So we're going to do a dry run today and pretend that the music venue that we're going to is my, my living room. But I'm going to take everything I normally would take with me and show you how to pack it all up, how to put it in the car, how to take it out of the car, how to get it set up, and how to get back in the house. So. This is my premier, my Venus premier. His name is Willie. He weighs 86 pounds, so that is where we're starting today. Um, so imagine that I'm getting ready for work. The first thing that I'm going to do is make sure I've got my pedals folded up before I put my harp in the case. Uh, these pedals need to be in the flat position. They need to be folded up or else they could snap off and that would be very, very bad. So first thing is that now I'm going to get my base cover. Now this is a cover that I got from Four Seasons Harp Covers. Um, it's an aftermarket one. It's the second one I've had for this harp. But it's not totally in great condition, but I've had it for about four years. So it's, it's done pretty well for four years. So first thing we do is just tip the harp forward onto the front two legs and slide it under the back two legs here. This is not heavy because I haven't actually lifted the harp up. Now, tip it back on the back two legs, get the base cover fully underneath the base, and then just kind of walk it backwards to where it's in the center, and go ahead and tighten that drawstring to where the rest of the base is covered. Now, this is important because the mechanism of your harp is on the underneath, and you don't want any dirt, rocks, water, dampness getting up into your mechanism or into your works, that would be bad. So, now we do that. And now I'm coming with the world's largest oven mitt. <laughs> Some people have also joked that this looks like the state of Michigan, which is also fine. <laughs> okay. Pop this guy on here, so. I will take a minute and show you. I've got one tuning key stuck on the harp in my tuning key holder, but I always have a backup one to go with me. What's in my pocket here on the side is an entire complete string set. You never know when you're going to break a string on a gig, and inevitably the one that you don't have is the one that's going to break. So I have a full seven and a half octave set of strings here, including bass wires. <laughs> And I have an emergency arm guard in case I lose mine. I got a roll of extra tape in here as well. And I usually have a drum key in here also because drum keys are the same size as pedal harp tuning keys. And uh, they are a good emergency. Oh crap, I forgot my tuning key tuning key. Uh, so after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get my harp on the dolly. Now this is one that's made by Salvi. And uh, just slide that onto the base. My strap came off, so I'm just using a tie down on this. Don't tell anybody. Um, <laughs> but get that nice and strapped up. So another thing that I do, and I'm not sure if this is totally copacetic or not, but I'm doing it, <laughs> is my bench. This part of my case is really padded, so there's not really any contact with my harp here. My tuning pins are on the back side and my mechanism is on this side. So if I put my bench here, it's not really resting on anything that could damage anything with the harp and it doesn't take me an extra trip to bring it in and out. So, shh. 
All right, let's see what else is going to come with me to the gig. All right. So for many years, I uh, carried around about 30 pounds of sheet music with me, which did not turn out to be a good idea. So I've got my little iPad here. This has about, oh, 600 different tunes on it that are ready to go. So I'll throw that in the bag. Okay. It's a little warm in here. Oh, goodness. This heat dome thing is really getting old, I tell you. Got my song sheets in case anybody wants to make a request during my show. Okay. Got my little iPad clamp. Uh, when I'm doing a gig where I'm singing and uh, playing, I like to hook this on my mic stand so I don't have to have a music stand and a mic stand. It makes things less busy and crowded. So I'll get that. Okay. I always throw in me trusty old arm wrap for my right hand so I don't bang my arm on my soundboard, which I want to do. And this is the most important part of the gig bag right here. I got my little bag of goodies. So what's in the bag? <laughs> Without this, a show cannot go on. First up, we've got our Band-Aid waterproof half-inch tape. This stuff, I swear I'd be their spokesmodel if they'd pay me. This is my highly technical bass amplification system. I don't go anywhere without it. Um, Vocalese throat spray. This is the best thing for singers that I've ever run across. If you ever have an allergy flare-up or a cold or whatever, and you have to sing for three hours anyway, this stuff is your friend. Where in the world did I put my tenor? That's a real good question. Oh, no. <laughs> Typical panic attack. Where did I put my tuner? Oh, well that's not good. Let me go ahead and find that real quick. Oh, of course I would wait till I was live on the damn TV to do that. So let me just go ahead. I'm gonna grab this tuner. I usually use a, a Super Snark, which has good range for the heart. Also, oh, there's another one in here. No wonder I was looking for two. <laughs> The tuner is the musician equivalent to the Hitchhiker's Guide for the Galaxy and their towel. Do you know where your tuner is? Also in the bag, got my pliers. This is for cutting bass strings and uh, any sort of pulling strings or doing anything like that with the harp. Also have my tiny, fillet, uh, tiny flathead screwdriver for emergency regulations. Even tinier flathead screwdriver for similar things. And a bunch of super glue. This is for my fingers. Um, sometimes they crack open or blisters or whatever and you just glue them back down. And so that is what is in my gig bag. There's also some Sharpies and some 9 volt batteries in case guitar players need a 9 volt battery because they, I think they eat them. Alright, so I'm going to stick that in the gig bag with the rest. Alright, now we're not done yet <laughs> because depending on what kind of show that we're going to go to, I'm going to need different types of amplification. So my harp has just a basic quarter inch out, so I'm going to go ahead and bring my quarter inch cable, but what I like to bring is my Bose S1 sound system. This is the good guy. This um, has two inputs here and has great sound, can fill up a venue. I mean, I haven't really run across a venue that's too big for this. Um, typically, if they are too big for this, they've got their own sound system, so I like to bring this guy. And... It's got a backpack carrying case, which I think is pretty cool, so I can stick all of my cables and everything up in the top. So let's not forget, you know, our power cable, definitely can't go anywhere without that. Got a quarter inch cable, need that. Got a microphone cable, need that. And... Got my trusty Sennheiser 835 and a backup, just in case I need that as well. Now, if I'm doing a gig where I have another singer or someone that needs more inputs, I will bring my M uh, mix board. I have an, it's an MG82CX that I like that also has effects on it, but if it's just me, I don't need to bring a mixer. So, we'll go ahead and throw that in the bag with the S1. Let's make sure we got everything before we try to head out the door. Okay, so I've got my bench, I've got my bag, got my iPad, song list, got my harp gig bag, got my arm wrap, got my sound system, 
Looks like we're about ready to go. Okay, so all I gotta do is saddle up and get ready to ride. So I'll see you in the living room. I'm gonna just wheel this out of the hallway and I'll be right with you. Okay. Now, since I don't actually have a video editor, we're gonna do it this way. <laughs> Yay, you get to see my house. Okay. All right, so here I come with the harp. ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put the computer outside so you can see what we're doing out here. Alright. So here I come. Make sure I lock the door. I'm not actually going to lock the door. So how my house is, is I've got just these little steps here. There's three of them, and I have a relatively low threshold out the door. So I always make sure that I go in with the heart in front of me when I come out over that lip, and then when I come in over that door frame, I always have the heart pulling it behind me. Because if you try to push over a lip, you're going to derail your heart. So... Here is a close-up. I'm going to take off this backpack so I'm not all kind of wieldy. Is I'm going to get my handle here. And I've got my foot on the back. So this is just a controlled fall. I'm going to come down these stairs. I got both hands on my on my dolly handle. I've made sure that there's no sticks, twigs, or rocks on my stairs. And I'm going to come down with a very controlled, slow fall. Like so. Okay. Now, I'm going to move my computer again and show you the rest of this process. <laughs> okay. load the heart, I'm going to spin it around to where my column is right behind my driver's seat. I'm going to park it about three feet behind my car so that when I open up the lift gate, I have clearance to get my heart in. Now, I drive a Subaru Forester and that has a four foot by six foot uh, size cargo bed, so anything that has that size of cargo bed will work with a pedal up. So, now, unpack everything, and here's the tricky bit. I'm going to move you over here so you can see. Now, what I'm going to do is grab the column inside the cover, reach my hand inside, and reach my hand inside the back so I've got my hands on harp wood and not the cover. Now I'm going to just come forward in a very controlled fall, wheel my column around the side, and lay it against the back gate of my car. So, I've got something looking like this. Now, I'm going to reach down in the bottom, grab the foot, reach around inside, stick my hand inside the column, grab the column and the foot on the far side, and I'm going to reach up and lift it over the hump inside my car. So here we come. So now we've got the harp inside the car, 
you see how the column is just right up there against the back of the driver's seat and I pivoted it over to the side so I've still got room for the rest of my stuff so that's how that goes as we sock the dolly in here bench bag bones s1 my mic stand, my uh, sign advertising my stuff, and of course, the love bucket. All right, let's go to work. So imagine that we drove all over the city and now we've pulled up at our amazing venue where we're gonna play tonight. Oh my gosh, we're here, that was so fast. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna put you on the other side so you can see the unloading process from this angle. All right. Okay. So, S1 system out of the car. Okay. Mic stand. Now, getting the harp out of the car. So, our harp is wedged in the car. So the biggest part is getting it over the hump in the middle of the car and back into that controlled uh, lever. Our committee said, give me a lever and I will move the world. Harp is no different. So I'm gonna grab the base and I'm gonna come just gradually and slowly out of the car. And I'm not really having to put much force on this. I'm just kind of wiggling back and letting gravity do its thing get it to about the two-thirds weight tipping point to where it shouldn't fall but it shouldn't it should be far enough out of the car to where it's not too heavy for me to lift it and lean it back up so again hand on the column hand in the soundboard I'm grabbing harp here not cover so harp there and I just lift up and the harp is upright those are the only two moments where strength really becomes any kind of a factor here, and if you have the angle correct, it's not that much difficult. All right, let's go ahead and get packed up. Bench. I'm going to stick my mic stand here, put the little tip bucket on top of it, let that hold down, stick my sign on the other side, slap on my backpack and I am ready to go inside the venue. So let's move you back up on porch so you can see how that looks like. come backwards up the stairs. Now, here we come with the harp. I'm going to come backwards up these stairs, again slowly and carefully. Okay, now remember what we said about the lip of the door and having to come over that lip of that door backwards? Okay. We 
we're in our amazing music venue. It's crowded in here and everybody is really excited to see us. They're like, oh my God, set up so we can tip you and pay you. All right, so let's go ahead and unpack the process and show you how that works. Okay. It is warm outside, if y'all ain't noticed. My goodness. Oof. Okay. Here I come. So now essentially all I have to do is unpack all of that jazz and then tune my harp and set up a sound system. <laughs> anyway, that's the most exciting part about getting ready for work as a harpist and how to move your harp as a professional gigging harpist. Hope you all have enjoyed the video and if you have any other questions, let me know. Have a great day.